70 years of brilliant leadership. <laughs> Not everyone will agree with visiting North Korea, but I've been fascinated by this country for a long time so I just had to go and see it for myself. It's not possible to travel independently, only on a state-run tour and obviously you're only shown what they want you to see. I absolutely do not support the regime that is in place here. Bear in mind everything I filmed was subject to inspection so please take some things that are said by me or others while present in the country with a pinch of salt. Enjoy the video. Kim Jong Un diplomatic breakthrough. North Korea's missile capability. Kim Jong Il has died. Little rocket man. A historic meeting. Nuclear arsenal. A demilitarized zone. Armed and dangerous. North Korea. Kim Jong Un. North Korea. Good morning. How are we getting on from the DPRK? It is 7:26 a.m. Day Got number two. Day number two. Got called a half an hour ago. Uh, or 26 minutes ago. It's day number three, by the way, technically, but day number two, full day in Not Pyongyang. And we're doing, I think we're doing a day tour around Pyongyang, yeah. seeing what it's all about, paying our respects to the great leaders. If you enjoy, give it a like, let's go. We would be exploring Pyongyang today, and our first stop was a visit to the Mansu Hill Grand Monument to pay respects to the bronze statues of Kim Il sung and Kim Jong Il. If you've seen the first two videos in this series then, you may have noticed that almost every North Korean citizen wears a badge with a picture of Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il or both over their hearts. Miss Hong explains why. People going outdoors, they just check their outfit in front of the mirror. And the, the first thing that they check is whether they're wearing their pink hair. Yeah? Because they want to have their leaders in their heart always. So why is that? Because the two leaders, you know what their uh, lifetime motto was? The people are my God. To visit the statues of the great leaders, you must be dressed conservatively. This means no shorts, etc. So instead of wearing long pants all day in the searing heat, Robbie and I brought our jeans with us to change in and out of. On the topic of clothing, North Korean citizens aren't allowed to wear jeans and casual t-shirts in public and must dress conservatively at all times. Upon arrival, we had the option to buy flowers to lay down in front of the great leaders. I'm pretty sure they cost 30 Chinese yuan each. <laughs> We're gonna go pay our respects to the great leaders. We have some flowers that we've bought and we're gonna lay them in front of them as a gesture and bow and then do a bow. Miss Hong told us not to take any photos, etc., until after we had laid the flowers and paid our respects, but I couldn't help it. I wanted to capture this moment. Any sign of disrespect in this area can land you in serious trouble. Even when taking photos, it's important to get the leaders within the frame. Cutting their heads off, accidentally or not, is apparently a great sign of disrespect. In fact, according to our guides, the thousands of Chinese tourists that visit North Korea each year aren't allowed to visit these monuments because they don't know how to behave appropriately. The statues stand 22 meters tall, surrounded by smaller statues of soldiers, workers and farmers, depicting their anti-Japanese revolutionary struggle. Originally, there was just a statue of Kim Il-sung stood here, but when Kim Jong-il died in 2011, a statue of him was erected and the Kim Il-sung statue was altered to betray him at a later age and smiling. Now we're off to the War Museum, I believe. Let's go. We arrived at the victorious War Museum, which basically reflects North Korea's view of their success in fighting against their arch enemy, the US. There were other tour groups going in, including many tour groups containing North Korean citizens. Just entered the War Museum grounds now. You're only allowed to take photo video outside, not inside. But, you know, one of the other guys on the group pointed out they're definitely not short for space here in North Korea. <laughs> So many big things everywhere. We were brought around by a 24 year old guy dressed in a military style uniform. Into the trench. Yeah. 
is a U.S. Army trucks. And this is the anti-tank gun of the U.S. forces. And this is anti-aircraft gun of the U.S. forces. That is an amphibian. From the U.S. Yes. yes. <laughs> I knew, I knew. This is the U.S. fighter A-2. It was shot down by either kids of our female aircraft hunters in 1953. Ooh. Your time is impeccable, mate. It was time for the main attraction, the USS Pueblo, an American spy ship that was captured by the North Koreans in January 1968. The ship was built in 1944 and used as a transport ship for the US Army. And in 1966, it was modified as an armed spy ship. And you can see the letters on the front, GER2. It means Civilian Marine Research Ship Number 2. 83 crew members were on board, of which one was killed during the capture of the ship. They were held for 11 months, and after written confessions from the crew and an admission of spying from the United States, they were released across the border to South Korea just in time for Christmas. Why couldn't it be returned, sorry? Why couldn't you return it? Yeah, as it's a trophy, huh? I said. About to enjoy a little movie while sitting on the captured US ship in North Korea. These are the crewmen of Pueblo. They were 83, including six officers. These are photos of the officers and their confessions. At that time, four enemy sailors were here to bring weapons to resistance, but one of them was killed on the spot, and the others were seriously wounded. And this is an infiltration chart showing 17 infiltration points the ship intruded into our territorial waters. And this is a map showing the pattern to capture Pueblo. On this map, this is the east coast of our country. And those are Republic heroes who emerged from this pattern. The middle one is still alive and works as a guide in this ship. What are you doing? Sending him an email from my yeah. mother. <laughs> trying to get off his phone. The middle one is still alive and works as a guide in this ship. We had a tour around the inside of the Victorious War Museum where we weren't allowed to take photo or video. It was full of stuff, including American and British artillery, guns, down planes, tanks, you name it, it's in there. There was also a 360 degree full scale diorama of the Battle of Taejong during the Korean War, which I managed to get a quick video of. Back onto the bus we go. We stopped at the monument to the party founding for five minutes. The hammer represents the workers, the brush in the middle represents the intellectuals, and the sickle represents the farmers, and all of the towers are standing at 50 meters and are symmetrical to represent everybody. Sorry, the guide was just saying something there. What was, what was she saying? She's telling me not to stand on the... Uh, oh. I'm standing on the ledge with the flower bed. No, not. <laughs> Miss Kim. <laughs> no, no, no. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> the guide said they built it in one year, so like it's massive. And build that in a year is pretty, pretty tough going, I'd imagine. Yeah, cool. What's really interesting as well is that directly opposite this structure are the bronze statues of the great leaders that we were at earlier. Next, we stopped at Kim Il-sung Square, where the military parades take place. It was built in 1954. We're out for a walk now on the streets of Pyongyang, and we're back in this square that has the library over there, which we were in yesterday in the other video. 
And what's very interesting is there's all these numbers <laughs> all over the ground here in white paint and they are there for the people that participate in the parades so they know where to stand and what to do, etc, etc. Why? I don't have sunglasses. Here. Sorry. So there's a wedding going on here, or at least she's in the car. Okay, let's wait to see. Here she comes. Ooh. How do you say congratulations? Yes. How? Chukamida. 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 Hey, we're on his video. Chukamida. Finally, it was lunchtime, and again, there was no shortage of food for us tourists. Nice. As usual, there was propaganda playing on a TV screen. This time, some of us were glued to the screens. Were we starting to be brainwashed? After lunch, we began a short walk to a tourist bookshop nearby. Annyeong, Hamishika. Annyeong, Hamishika. We're in a bookstore now of which we have seen many and in all of them they have this book which I would love to buy but I wouldn't want to carry it around with me. 70 years of brilliant leadership. <laughs> that would look good on your wall in Portugal now. Yeah. Our next house. <laughs> if you want to know the conscience of a soldier, look at his weapons. The longer you look at the titles of these books, the more comical it gets. It's forbidden to fold a newspaper on one of the great leaders' faces. So as you can see with this one, they've put the fold here and a fold here, so it folds like that. Or alternatively, you can roll it. I'm not going to demonstrate with this one. It's an interesting thing to know if you do this to DPRK, don't fall in the leader's face. We left the bookshop and walked up the road a little. <laughs> we were now on the other side of Kim Il-sung Square waiting for the bus. We crossed the river and arrived at Juche Tower, the second tallest stone structure in the world. Juche is the official state ideology. It basically means that man is the master of his destiny and that the Korean masses are to act as the masters of the revolution and construction and that by becoming self-reliant and strong, a nation can achieve true socialism. 150 meters tall, apparently five euros to go to the top. Let's see how much it's gonna be in Chinese yuan. Should be about 35 if the exchange rate is fair. Tallest stone tower in the world, let's do it. Up on top of Juche Tower right now, it was 40 RMB, but Robbie had Euro, so we paid in Euro to save those little bit of cents, you know. The views up here are incredible, 360 degree view of Pyongyang, and we're very lucky because it's 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 pretty clear, you can see very far right now. You get the same view from the bar in the hotel. That's true, but you know, we were up there the other night and at night time anyway, you can't see shh. Ni hao. Ni hao. Hello. Wa bu shi chongguo ren. I can't see. Was she Ireland ren? Oh, Ireland. Wa chi guo ni Ireland. Oh, I think Ireland. So the stadium over there is actually the biggest in the world in terms of capacity. 150,000 people can fit in there. And it's also where they have the mass games, although it has been postponed at the moment. I didn't want to say it while I was standing in North Korea, but we heard it was postponed because Kim Jong-un wasn't happy with the standard of the mass games. Once again, we were on our way somewhere else.
about to go into a local Korean supermarket to do some shopping if we want. We have about 40 minutes to kill inside here. So this is going to be an interesting one. Obviously mixing with locals. And it, oh yeah. Look at this. No photos here. Really? Yeah. As if that was going to stop me. What striked me the most about this shopping centre was how normal it all seemed, but then again, only the elite North Koreans live in Pyongyang. We say gambe with the Chinese man in Korea. <laughs> so unfortunately couldn't film too much inside there because it's forbidden. But interesting, I mean to be honest with you, it's just like any other supermarket anywhere else in the world. So I mean nothing special. Koreans going about their daily business, their daily lives, buying stuff. We said hello to some, we had some interactions. We went up to the clothing part of the store and... Uh, I tried on a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> which looked quite well, you should have bought it, but I guess you don't want to be lugging it around for the next few months when it's really, really hot everywhere we're going. So just now enjoying the strawberry drink before we go somewhere else. Just outside of Pyongyang, we stopped by the house where in 1912 Kim Il-sung was born and raised. Kim Il-sung was quoted saying, we were not poor, but always a step away from poverty. There was quite a walk up to the house, which made me think that they must have demolished a whole neighborhood to turn it into a museum. Now it is 145 long history. And here you can see their summer house. The summer house used to like the rest of us in her summer days. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> We're about to go inside Mang Yong Do School Children's Mang Palace. Mang, okay. Sorry, say it then. Mang Yong Do. <laughs> And Mang Yong De, we all say it differently, but we're going into School Children's Palace to, to see uh, uh, the children perform. Talented children. Uh, this is the design of the of our friendly the present song. So when he was alive, he loved the children very much. There was certainly no expense spared in this school, and to be honest, it looked fantastic. However, don't be fooled, this is obviously the absolute best. The talent of the kids that performed for us was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Bobby had to deliver flowers from our group to the stage, however, this was left to the last moment. Quick, 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 quick! It was all over, ladies and gentlemen. The curtains were closing. People were leaving. Will he make it? They put the curtain back up for you. Some of the others gave our girl guide lots and lots of sweets. I bet you would appreciate a bag too, huh guys? We went for dinner, which was my least favorite meal for the entire tour. It was some sort of glass noodles that we had to cook ourselves and throw an egg in. But hey, at least the beers were good. Before heading back to the hotel, we took a stroll along Science Street, where apparently all of the elite teachers and lecturers reside. It's a very nice street, to be honest.
We've been walking along Science Street for the last while now and professors and teachers have apartments in this building here and each floor is shaped in an atom. Nerdy, nerdy, that's nerdy stuff if you don't know what an atom is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back on the bus for the final time of the day and Miss Hong was very generous and bought us all ice creams before we returned to the hotel and called it a night. There's one for everyone in the audience, baby. Back in the hotel, about to turn the lights off. It's been another very interesting day here in the DPRK. Very, very long days. Very, very informative days from the DPRK perspective. And I'm loving the tour so far. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, comment down below, let me know your thoughts, and make sure to hit the subscribe button to see more. See you real soon. Good luck. So we're currently staring into South Korea from North Korea.